it's Peter Mead, and I'm here with Deborah Massela, one of the OG link builders. Deborah, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me uh, and sharing your insights about link building. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, what do we call link building these days? I have always, um, because of my background, the way that I came into this industry, um, I worked for almost 20 years in traditional marketing, offline marketing. And keep in mind, <laughs> being older, <laughs> um, that when I started working years ago, um, we had fax machines. That was our big technology. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, coming mm -hmm. into it, and I, I learned from a traditional standpoint. So um, we learned promotions and marketing and sales and publicity and we had to kind of use paper products. Yeah. Um, so I've always <laughs> looked at this more as a marketing standpoint, a link building standpoint. And from the day that I started in, in SEO, which was, I, I always get confused. I'm not sure if it was 1999 or 2000. It was somewhere in that time period. Mm. I always referred to it as link marketing. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think today, you can call it whatever you want, obviously, um, <laughs> as long as you, you know, you do a little bit of it. But I think today there's a little bit of a misnomer with the concept of digital PR, which a lot of people are using to equate to link building. Mm. In its very basic form, PR means public relations. And if you look that up from a technical or an educational academic aspect, that basically means um, dealing with the public. And link building, while its end result is to deal with the public, the concept of what's being done is not dealing with the public. It's really media relations, not public relations. So it's mm. that term, I don't think is, is a good term um, from an academic standpoint, um, it, because it really doesn't fit. I've always called it link marketing. I refer to yeah. it sometimes as link building, you know, whatever whatever hat you want to wear depending which circles it's, you're talking i, in, I think guess so. <laughs> i really do but uh, but in the end of the day being correct about something using terminology i think is important so using digital pr is is not right really what mm. you're doing in that case is you're pitching um outlets to host content it's a media pitch um is mm. for me is the correct terminology so i don't use that phrase and i I don't think it's appropriate. Um, trendy, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Appropriate, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do hear a lot about people uh, talking about synonymously link building and PR. But you know, the way that I my experience with digital marketing and especially with PR is that is a whole another ball game of its own. Uh, it, you know, digital PR is a whole another thing. <laughs> exactly. I, I think it's. Um, you know, public relations is, is trying to meld or work with the con, a, a conception or a concept that the public has. A lot of people, if you think about it as putting out fires or uh, shaping or melding opinion, it's not the concept of link building and the act of link building, the actual tactic, um, or actually it's a strategy, not a tactic, is, mm. is not um, public relations. If anything, it's media relations, but it's really pitching. It's just media pitch. So, I'm very interested in philosophy in general, and I'm specifically interested in philosophy from people such as yourself who've been doing this stuff for a long time. So I'd be interested in what would you, could you sum up your philosophy in a, in a few short sentences? <laughs> One of the advantages of having been in the industry from really from the start um, through today is the, uh, the, 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 the thing that which we all have is that hindsight. So I can look back mm. and, you know, from when I started at the turn of the century and look at it, you know, for 22 years and, you, excuse me, you can see the ups and downs, you can see the patterns, you can see the trends. And I can tell you in the end, if you look at it realistically, not a lot has changed when it comes mm. to link building. Now, things have changed when it comes to SEO and the algorithm because that's technology, right? 
Yeah. But the concept of link building, the concept of link marketing, that hasn't changed. And the way that that affects the algorithm, that hasn't really changed. Some people would argue that there's some minor differences, but really all that was is. Yeah. Uh, it's just a matter of being creative and understanding what it is that you're going after. Um, most people want to, and it's understandable. I say this before I say it because it's going to sound awkward coming from me, but most people want to do things easily and I, I'm no different, right? But mm -hmm. yeah. you put up a website with a click, you buy hosting with a click, you buy images with a click, you can even do keyword research with a click. And then it comes to that part about marketing your site through, through links. And that's not a click. Hmm. You know, that has to actually be a, um, a strategy. You have to have a plan, if you will. And you have to understand your, your market. So everything else is it, up to that point is a little bit automated, um, more so automated than link building. Link building can't be automated. And a lot of people try to sell it on scale. You know, we can do link building at scale. It's, you know, it's really not um, just because of the nature of link building and the way that the algorithm works. Um, scale doesn't always work for you. Mm. So it's one of those things where you can get up to that point and then it's kind of, it's like a horse you have to stop, you know, and uh, really do some, some planning and some, some deep thought process about where, how you want to move forward. And not, it, part of the issue with SEO is we try to pigeonhole everything into one box and that's not the case. Hmm. What works on one site might not work on another because the algorithm behind it is different. There's different pages and there's, there's different um, search streams and data results. And really, you know, people think that they need to optimize their sites for themselves. You really have to optimize for everyone else. Um, because hmm. I've never been concerned about people that are ranking ahead of me. I've always been more concerned about the people ranking right behind me because they're eventually going to try to rank over me. So yeah. most people fixate on that and not with what's right behind them. And it's like, you know, you got to look over your shoulder as well. So you really can't yeah. say one thing works for everybody in SEO. It just doesn't. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to understand, you have to understand the industry and the algorithm behind that industry. And they're different. They're different um, okay. because the search results are different. There could be many more pages for mortgage insurance than there are for pink doggy booties um, and different emphasis being put there. Um, you know, Google is not just Google, it's Google News and Google Shopping and Google Images. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into trying to make the determination about why a page links. Uh, listen to me, why a page ranks, not links. Um, so it's different. So that's, mm. you have to look at everything kind of with blinders on and in a tunnel and then incorporate it into the bigger mix. Um, I think to be successful and to rank well consistently in long-term. A couple of things I picked up on there, um, that I kind of want to maybe tease out a little bit more from your philosophy. I'm thinking specifically where, you were talking about people in general. It's just a part of human nature where we want things to be easy. And really the digital landscape has made that pretty easy. Like you say, you can just have one click hosting, you know, you can update your website with a click. You can put social media out there and schedule that automatically. But what we saw, especially, especially for me, that kind of easy way out, caused a lot of problems, especially when Google got sick of it and started releasing little furry algorithms, like I'm thinking <laughs> specifically Penguin. And that really showed up a lot of these kind of easy, fast, quick, you know, tactics. So, I mean, that really shone a light on these kind of uh, fast ways of trying to you know, get get things done before they really getting into the proper strategy of a campaign. So that leads me on to ask you, how would you assess the quality of a potential backlink? 
you know, I've always thought relevancy is a huge part for me, relevancy and, and potential for it to send traffic, that kind of thing. How would you assess the quality of a link that you would think would be worth going after? Well, I think um, before I answer um, that, from my perspective, looking at potential link partners and or uh, pages that are link partners, I have to look at pages a lot. And, and I, again, uh, with terminology, a lot of people you say, oh, is this a good link? Is this a bad link? All links are good. All links are good. It doesn't matter what kind of link it is. As long as it works, <laughs> it's good. If it's broken, it's bad. Um, but <laughs> it doesn't matter if the link works. It doesn't matter what it's, what attribute it has attached to it. Um, if it's a link that can send, physically send traffic somewhere, then it's good. Links that are not hyperlinked, that are just on a page, they're still good um, because it's content on a page. But that's all it is. It's mm. just content on a page. I'm not 100% sure I'm sold on all the issues with citations, but um, mm. I do believe that name and brand recognition um, and content on the page work in your favor. So that said, to answer your question, if I was looking at potential pages on someone else's site to determine if they were um, worth pursuing, if you will, mm. um, the only thing I can say is I think Every page, as long as attached to a, a good site, a site that has presence, um, a site that's not automatically manufactured, i.e. scraper sites, we we'll just lump it all together under that term, um, mm -hmm. you know, and pages that are in the index. So, you know, Google can't impart any type of algorithm value to anything if page isn't in the index or if it's so buried in the index that it's not going to pass any great value. So the question people usually come back with, well, how many, you know, what position should it be in? And mm. I say, you know, if you're in mortgage insurance, being in the top 100 is probably a good thing um, for your term. Uh, if again, for, you know, pink doggy booties, it probably would be 300. I mean, it's just not as competitive as mortgage insurance. Hmm. And that's important to remember. So if the page is indexed, it's a good page. Um, if the link that sits on the page that's going to point to yours is working, it's a good link. Um, <laughs> other than that, I think that um, there are obviously some web pages and some websites that don't meet the visual check, you know, um, hmm. haven't been updated, you know, are obviously full of maybe auto-generated content. Those are just smart, natural things to stay away from. Mm. But otherwise, I don't buy into this thing about good and bad links. All links that work are good. Um, just like all dogs are good, the owners yeah. are bad, right? <laughs> um, it, but all links are good as long as they work. Yeah. Um, okay. And in linking to pages, like I said, this a lot of it is, you know, you've got to take a look at it. Most people want to depend on a tool and I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, if the tool does tell you though that it's um, in position, say 15 or in position 55, you know, a, a quick visual check is not a bad thing. But mm. um, if you're working with sites and pages that you've never worked with before, then I think you have to take the look test. You just have to physically by hand go and take a look. But good link building is really about partnerships. Um, mm. and knowing your sources and knowing where your audience hangs out. So you're going to already know those, those pages that you want to target, um, those, and those sites in general that you want to target ahead of time. At least you, you that, that's how I work. Um, mm. so I think that it, in general is, is probably the best thing you can do is to develop the partnerships. I don't subscribe to this idea either that link building is relationship building. I don't believe that. Okay. It's kind of corny, honestly, um, to me, because frankly, nobody wants to build a relationship with you. Nobody cares. Mm. And, and, and I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be insensitive, but that's the reality of business. You know, this is business. Yeah. And so nobody cares about you. They care about what you can bring to them. So link building is about finding partners, you know, that 
will give you a benefit and you can benefit because the, again, this is 50, 50, mm. um, somebody that's stable, you know, stable sites. So, you know, a lot of people come and go on the internet sites come up, they're not maintained. Well, those are probably the types of things that you don't want to go on. Um, mm. And obviously what, what we all, you know, those scraper sites type things, although you don't see a ton of those anymore. I think the algorithm has weeded a lot of that stuff out, but um mm. Now we have this issue with, um, how do you say it? Um, Auto-generated content, uh, yeah. robotic content, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, like AI written, that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So, which some of that stuff can sound kind of ick. Um, yeah. So, you, you know, you want to, if you're not partnering with the site, you physically want to go and take a look at it. Just make sure it's something you bring home to your mother, you know? Yeah. yeah and if yeah. it's not, don't yeah. do it. <laughs> why do you think there are still so many people who are building links who just rely on this this kind of da or dr kind of factors um for assessing the quality of the links i have never um the the concept of da which stands for domain authority mm. right is that yeah yeah um I have never used the tool that started that trend. Um, and I'm talking about the Moz tool. It's mm -hmm. not a tool I've ever used uh, in my working. Um, yeah. But I know that they were kind of the first ones that started that trend of yeah. putting a label on a link. And I understand why it's done. Um, I understand it was done to be helpful. But what yeah. has happened is that whole one click uh, mindset has kind of come into it mm. so that it's easy to sell something or it's easy to make someone understand the concept very, very quickly. It's just, um, I, I get it. I get that's why they have those labels. And subsequently, all of the tools have some kind of label um, that they use. They kind of have to, um, yeah. you know, the tool can't say, we think this is really cool. You know, they've got to yeah. label it with <laughs> something short. So yeah. I get it. I also get that that's a way to easily make someone understand a perception. But so let me just mention this. As somebody who um, has been doing this a long time and has used uh, just about every tool out there, but mm -hmm. the Moz tool, apparently, um, I would tell you that not there's no tools that do the same. Is it just, I, so yeah. if I did results for a tool A and I pulled the same results from B, they're gonna be different because of the way that those tools operate and the um, mm. way that they have their content uh, cached, the way that they, they search for their content, uh, the way that they distribute it within the tool itself, blah, blah, blah. All of those things, uh, you will get different search results. I have always used more than one tool if I'm doing big audits. Um, mm. big audits, you know, on lots of pages, because I'm always a little afraid that I'm going to miss something. And there's no way on big sites that you can do a visual backlink check all the time. <laughs> you would, not, you just would never sleep. And so yeah. you do have to have some help with those things, but I never depend on one, but I do understand the concept and I do understand why people want something we have rating systems for everything in the world. Mm. Um, and so, you know, why not, why not links? The, the issue is, is that it has become blurred with what the search engines think. And mm. that's, that's not the case. The search engines don't recognize those um, labels, uh, tool labels, because they don't belong to them. And, uh, and they have stated that publicly. I mean, I'm not saying anything that's, out of turn here for a search engine, they say that. Yeah. So I get it. Um, you know, it's just, I think part of it too, you're, you generally won't find, or maybe you do, I don't know, I, I haven't seen it, um, but you generally don't find people in the link building industry or, you know, credible link builders that use that determination uh, on a steady basis. Um, hmm. Hmm. But you do have to, you got to, you, know, you have to be able to qualify things. You can use those kind of metrics that the tools give you 
maybe to help you with some prospecting and then you can do some further checks so they they might maybe at scale a way of looking at potential lists of prospects if you want a tool and if you want to know what's what a search engine thinks or you want a tool that's going to give you the very best algorithmic bang for your buck if you will all you have to do is search on google <laughs> Google does all the work for you, right? If you yeah. want to know who's ranking or what Google thinks is number one for mortgage insurance or who they're giving domain authority to, mm -hmm. all you have to do is plug the term into Google and look at the search results. Okay. They'll tell you. And if you go to Google and then you look at, um, not Google, if you go to YouTube or if you go on Google Images or if you go mm. on Google Shopping or you go on to any one of their scholars, and you put in those terms and you see what's coming back, Google will tell you how they have assessed and how they have assigned what they feel is authority to that page. Mm. And it's a page, they don't assess websites, they assess pages. So, you know, there's a lot of pages. I don't know how many I saw the other day, some figure was like one trillion. I was like, yeah. Man, that's a lot of pages. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, Google, Google does that. But can you do that at scale? And the answer is no. If you're mm -hmm. working on big sites, if you're working on something smaller, obviously it's in your best interest to do that. But you know, mm -hmm. if you're working on sites with 10,000 pages, you know, I want to see the light of day at some point. So yeah. um, I get it. You know, I do. I get it. But I don't live by it. You know, I, mm -hmm. I still go back and take a look on my own. I'd be interested in your opinion about how link building can influence your EAT is this is this something that you that you that you care about something that you think about when looking at doing your link building or is EAT just kind of a a byproduct of doing good work <laughs> So earlier, I made the comment that um, being old has its advantages uh, in that we can look back and see the trends and what has changed and transpired through the years with Google. One of the things that Google has never wavered from and or has been uh, is the fact that they are looking for quality pages. Mm. And at the end of the day, if you treat your online business like you would treat your offline business, there's... There's no one that would have a store and purposely make it look bad or sell bad products if they want to be successful. So your online store, your offline store, same concept, right? You, you want to have good products. You want to have, you want to have a good look and you want people to return. And in order to do that, you have to keep your store constantly filled with products and ideas and, and, and fun things so that people come back in and really online is no different. Mm. We just do it differently that we do it with images and we do it with content, with written content. Mm. And so I don't see that being any different than where they were years ago. I really don't. They just put different labels on it because their algorithm is constantly technically changing. They have to, they have to mm. be able to keep up with all of those quintillion pages that are coming yeah. into the index and with all of the new technology, you know, with, mm -hmm. with this thing that everybody, with the videos and images and audio, um, mm. just news, people's tastes and desires change. If you look at the way that the algorithm has changed, even since we've been in this madness of COVID, um, where people have been online more looking for more, visual um responses that that they change so when they change we have to change with them because we live in a google world right we just mm. live here it's a google world we live in it so if they want something we have to kind of go along with them if we want to reap the benefit of ranking well mm -hmm. and in part of that though is just basic um marketing strategy you know you have to have a good product you have to have it marketed well. It has to sound good. It has to look good. And online, it has to, you don't have that human interaction where you can sell someone something like you do in an offline store. So it has to be um, persuasive. Mm -hmm. And 
that means you know your content has to constantly stay on topic. It has to be authoritative. It has to look good and be trustworthy. Um, people don't trust anything. At the end of the day, they don't come back or they don't click through or they don't stay on the site. It doesn't become sticky. So I can get it. You know, I, I see it. I understand it. But if you've always lived by the mantra that you provide good content and you provide a good service on your site, you shouldn't be overly affected by any of these new concepts and, and terms that yeah, Google yeah. comes along. Mm. If you look at the Google Raiders guides, yeah. you know the, yeah. Um, the one that was I leaked. Have them and uh, now they just, it was leaked originally and now they just uh, updated it recently as well. <laughs> exactly. Um, back in the way day when they were secret, secret, uh, mm. we, of course, we had them. Uh, you know, they were linked, uh, leaked out to us. And mm. I, I've got them. I, I have kept copies through the years. And if you look at them, they mm. don't really change all that much yeah. with the concept of quality. So it makes sense to me. You brought up the comment about relevancy earlier. It makes sense to me that if you own a site selling baby products, um, that snow tires, you know, you don't link or partner with the site on yeah. snow tires. But on yeah. the other hand, uh, you know, you do have to have snow tires on your minivan uh, when you're transporting your little lovely baby. I get that, but yeah. um, only as a one off, you know, or something, <laughs> something fun. So I do understand that the algorithm is mathematical mm -hmm. and it has to look for similarities in words. And that's where your relevancy process comes in and okay. you think about that it ties into eat and all of the other terminologies as well okay so common sense wins the day when it comes to um picking yeah. marketing partners yeah i've i've picked up there what you're talking about the algorithm being mathematical um, obviously you're talking about page rank uh there but without Without kind of diving down the rabbit hole of what page rank is or how it works, this this kind of this kind of idea that people talk about a lot, I think it came from Google themselves, where they said uh, links to your site are endorsements. Do you do you pay much mind to this idea that these links are really endorsements? Um, I know they used that terminology years and years ago. Um, I haven't seen it, although I have not been in Google web, uh, the TOS on the, on the Google site for a long time. Mm. Um, but I do know that they used the word endorsement. Um, a lot of that had to do with the fact that, uh, I think comes with trust and trustworthiness, you know, that you trust the site that you're sending people to, um, that the site is somehow connected from yours to, to it. Hmm. Uh, I think it kind of goes back into, into that. You're not going to link to say, if you were a baby site to, you know, anything that's kind of nefarious or, um, hmm. you know, uh, not safe for children. So I think that's probably yeah. where that, where that came from. Um, I, I do think Peter and I say this kindly, I, I not as a criticism because I do it too. Hmm. Um, People try to read too much into what Google says sometimes. Um, yeah, you know, because everybody, we're looking for that one-click answer. I, I'm not sure I subscribe to a lot of that. They, at the end of the day, we need to remember first and foremost that Google is an advertising platform. That's what they do, mm -hmm. and that's why they exist. Uh, they don't yes. exist to make our pages look good. They exist to make money. They're a business. And so it's in their best interest to tell us all the time that we need to put quality content on their web pages because mm -hmm. people will come looking for it. And chances are 50%, right, that they're going to click the ad and or the organic result. Um, yeah. So we need to keep that in mind too. But it's also at the end of the day, it's your business. And you know, you don't want to send people away to someplace they don't need to be. People yeah. don't forget. Um, people don't forget what you do to them. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know yeah. what's shame on you. Yeah, they don't. So 
yeah. Um, if they're using PageRank anymore, I don't know. I don't put too much thought process <laughs> into all of that. I really don't. I have other things to do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I pat people on the back that spend days and hours on Twitter talking about that stuff. But um, <laughs> in the end of it, you know, yeah. we're all just business people trying to get ahead. So that leads me to the next thing I'm, I'm kind of wanting to run by you, which is um, what about PBN links from private blog networks? Um, I, I see they're still a popular tactic. What should we think about PBNs these days? You know, there are some very good PBN um, circles. And there are some very bad PBN circles. <laughs> um, and, you know, there's some, which again, in business, there's, you know, same thing, um, mm. good and bad. But I think for you as a person, as an individual webmaster who is looking for a site to place content on that has a link back to your site, um, you need to look really hard at some of these PBNs and ask a couple questions because. Not only does Google have an algorithm out there that searches out for spammy sites, um, mm -hmm. there's a whole slew of people, just webmasters, that know how to use these um, snitch reports. What do they call them? Where you can put a yeah. um, the spam report. Yeah, the spam reports. Yeah, and and for a long time, I mean, we did. Did Google's work for them. There was a mm. big push to report sites that in, in pages that were not good. So they have a database of that already. So they kind of know, you know, what's going on. Um, and, uh, and then this whole disavow process too, mm. you know, we fed into that. And so there was even more ways that they figured out <laughs> what yeah. these bad websites were, but they pop up, you know, overnight. So it's, it's, Really, like I said, if you're going to partner with someone, um, you might just you need to take a look at the site. And if the about page doesn't have any contact information, there's no people visible, you know, on the contact page. Everybody has an about us page, and they want to show off their little faces, mm. and that's great um, because that means that there are real people behind the site that are working it. Uh, no phone numbers, you know, email addresses or generic or Gmail addresses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if it sounds and walks like a duck, then, you know, it probably is. Um, <laughs> you might just want to stay away from those. Do they work? You know, they do in some cases. Mm. Um, they, I've never seen them work long term, generally because of that issue, you know, people, your competitors turning you in. Uh, it's hard enough you have to work against the algorithm, but your competitors work against you as well in in some in some avenues, in some you know keyword niches. It's very competitive, and so people do whatever they can. So yeah, you know you got a lot of things working against you, but you just you know PBNs are like anything else. It's something that comes up that is used, and you just have to take a look at it. Some of them are very well done. Hmm. Some of them not so much. Yeah. Um, so they don't care if they get burned. I mean, just look at the domain name. Some of them are so weird. <laughs> Figure yeah. them out. Um, <laughs> I knew, I have noticed a trend where PBNs have stopped using a lot of hyphens in, uh, yeah. you know, used to be a lot of keyword hyphens in a domain that seems to have stopped. Now it's funky domain names yeah. <laughs> um, that have, have popped up. So, eh, if, you know. If it doesn't look good to you, it doesn't look good to the people that visit your site. So yeah, yeah. So what would you say to people who just want to get started? Um, they're not really ready to start doing outreach or that kind of thing. And they, they just want to get some starter links, some safe links, you know, to get started. I mean, because of course we want to avoid the unnatural links, the kind of links where we go manufacturing them because they're they're just probably not going to have the value that we want. So how would you get started? 
you know, for years, um, I was on the speaking circuit and, I, you know, used to do 15, 20 conferences a year and training sessions. Yeah. This was the number one question that I got. Yeah. The number one question <laughs> was always, how do I get started? Uh, it, it's like writing a term paper or learning how to ride a bike. You know, you, you have be sure that you understand that the first couple of times you've just got to fail. So get over the hurt now um, and the disappointment uh, and, you know, keep that in mind. Um, everybody starts somewhere, but in that case, we call those foundational links. So link building mm. from a practitioner standpoint, uh, like myself, we categorize them. And they're called foundational links because they, they, you know, just like your house, it sits on a foundation and you're that same, same concept with link building. Mm. You'll need to go to all of the, um, what are they called? Like the associations, your chambers of commerce, yeah. any of the business entities that support your industry. And I think mm -hmm. this is really important. Um, and you need to get, even if, like I said, don't worry about what attribute is wrapped around that link, just make sure that you get the link from that because you need that business reputation, that business support uh, for your business. Hmm. So go to the Better Business Bureau, go to the associations, go to the chambers of commerce and get those links. Hmm. I think the next thing that I would do is there is any type of community and everybody has a forum. I swear to God, I found a forum last year for apple pie makers not making it up it was active there were a bunch of people in it um but these guys and gals they were into baking pies and apple pie was the primary thing but it yeah. was a phenomenal forum and <laughs> down to zoologist there are forums out there for everything yeah uh and i would definitely join those i would join them uh, mostly for the listening. Mm. I would get on there and I would take a look and listen to who are all the super posters, who are all the super moderators, whatever you want to call them. Um, I would look to see if they have websites and I would go off to the side and email them and say, hey, I'm a new site. Is there anything I can do to work with you to be featured on yours? Can I write for you? Mm. Can I buy advertising on your site? whatever, because these people are super users, super contributors, super moderators within that niche. Mm. Um, you can do the mm. same thing on Twitter. It's a little harder on Twitter, a little more time consuming because you have to kind of cut through the crap on Twitter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I've, I'm, like I said, I'm old and I'm old fashioned. So I start with the forums, but it, it, forums is just all of these new sites that they have that are popped up out there um they're just forms you know 2.0 yeah. yeah right so mm. um that's what i do you could do the same thing i do it on facebook slack communities yeah. discord i mean i belong to all of them i troll mm. constantly looking for super users um mm. what i call super users you can call them whatever you want contributors moderators um mm. and that's mm. what i do when I, I that's how i get started and generally from there, the snowball goes. Yeah. LinkedIn, Facebook, those kind of places. You know, I guess there are forums, there's groups, there's kind of chats. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, <laughs> a lot less unmoderated, of course. <laughs> LinkedIn is probably the most, from a link building standpoint, underutilized and under-discussed um, mm. platform for lead building. Mm. Now, uh, you know, everybody complains, ah, I got all these emails from people. That's not the way to, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about finding super users because business people, especially if you're in finance, recruiting, HR, big there, very, very big there um, on LinkedIn, um, manufacturing, you know, these guys and gals don't have they have forums and they do participate on those forums, surprisingly in the manufacturing world and transportation world more so than others. Um, but they mm. go and they utilize LinkedIn for finding people. Yeah. Um, 
because people make the decisions about, about their content and their links. And if they see you, they see you posting in groups and they see you, re, you know, responding and talking and commenting, um, that trust factor comes in. At least they have name recognition. Mm-hmm. So um, probably not a good idea if you're starting out to be snarky. Uh, yeah, <laughs> be supportive, but yeah, LinkedIn from a link building standpoint is um, very helpful. Yeah, but yeah, I just never, I never use the in mail. I think they call it in mail on LinkedIn. Oh, I yeah. don't do that. Yeah, I always find a way to contact them outside of LinkedIn. Yeah, Slack is another one. Have a great uh, Slack is very very good for finding. Yeah, sources. yeah, all kinds of communities of people who, I mean. These people are on these platforms. Um, they're in the digital, digital space. They're mm-hmm. wanting to promote their brand. They're looking for quality. If you're offering something to them which can help them, well, that's why I talk about linkable assets is, you know, you've got something that's worthy for them to link to and you're offering mm-hmm. something to them that can help them. They want to feature something on their blog or they want to, mm-hmm feature something on their platform. So that's the way I think about it. How would you then think about uh, if we can maybe move on to directory links? Because like I said, I reread your your um, inclusion in the Ultimate Guide to Link Building. Love that book. I read it years ago. It's been a real Bible for me for years. And um you, you kind of had some ideas and opinions about directory links in that in that book. So I'm just wondering, um, because there's a, there's a second version of the book has come out, Garrett French has updated that. Obviously, um, sadly, you know, Eric Ward passed away, and um, but I think his legacy lives on really strongly in that book. And I've I've always taken notice. I used to be a subscriber to the Link Moses newsletter, and yeah, you know, just loved all of that content. But what, just but specifically, your contribution to the book? Do you do you still stand by everything you said about the the directory links? Like you said, not a lot's changed. Has has things changed in, with directory links? No, I uh, when you this is what we're talking about, you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I had to go look it up because I couldn't remember, you know, what I said. Maybe you? <laughs> this has been a number of years ago, um, and I um, just really interesting that what all is in here. But so, yeah. so you understand, I came into this industry uh, as a directory owner when I started in the mm. late '90s. This I do remember. Um, <laughs> my daughter was born in 1998. And uh, I stopped working outside the home Uh, and I decided Mm. to teach myself how to code. And the first thing I did is I built a directory and it was a directory for organic food and clothing, which were big granola crunchers in our house. Um, We follow the green path. So it was Mm. a natural thing for me to do. And it's how I cut my teeth um, on this, this business. Didn't know what I was doing. Um, somebody in my directory asked me to help them SEO their site. And I was like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. And so <laughs> I reached out to a girlfriend um, who was very prominent in the SEO industry in those days. And her name was Jill Whalen. And she showed me the way mm. she hired me and mentored me for a couple of years until I started my own link building business. So that's how I came into it. So I came into it predisposed to really liking them. And understanding the concept and the value behind a directory. And that's, most people want to use them as a one-time easy link, but the value behind a directory is much like a form Hmm. because what it does is it places a lot of sameness in one place. And if you're looking for relevancy and you're looking for, um, you know, quality websites and people who are interested in marketing they are, they get the concept of directories too, right? So they're already there. And so that, that concept and that idea, that's why I think they have value um, is for what they provide for you in one spot. So sadly, 
we don't have many of them left anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have kind of gone by the wayside. General directories, there's still one uh, called Best of the Web. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's still out there um, and it's still humming along and it's perfect for the what I just said, you know, for keeping a lot of sameness in one spot. Mm. Um, but other than that, what you find are regional, local, some topical directories that are left. Yeah. Um, I think they're making a little bit of a comeback. I've noticed that recently, uh, especially in mm. the geoloco um, areas. You find mm. cities, uh, regions. I also have noticed mm. some concepts, um, some conceptual directories have popped back up. Uh, because people, especially since we've had the pandemic, have mm. liked to congregate um, for camaraderie and, you know, also for education. So if you, if you even think of the concept of Pendleton, you know, the bicycles, um, people all, you know, ride their bikes in, and they're in one particular group, there, that sense of community has kind of spilled over into the business world as well. Okay. And so they're kind of making a little bit of a, of a resurgence. But I think from a link building standpoint, that one click thing definitely comes into play. You get mm. a link, you know, it's a, it's a static link. It doesn't change. And it's generally on um, a page or, or on a site that is topically or geographically relevant. Um, mm. It was really simple in the old days to round up all the nasty, stupid PBM directories that came up. Uh, and get rid of them. And they did. I mean, they just sort of ignored them and trounced them out of the index. Yeah. Um, mm. But now what's coming back is, is smarter, much smarter and much better. Mm. Um, mm. You find a lot of it through mostly, I think, through cities and, and so forth. And it doesn't help if you're a general site. But like I said, they do have topicals mm. as well, topical directories. But for me, again, the directory is just like a gold mine to pick apart, yeah, to yeah. find out who's in there and who <laughs> I can use and who can be a benefit to my client. Or if I'm working at my hobby sites, um, then, you know, the same way. But uh, okay, yeah, I still think they have a lot of, a lot of life left in them and a lot of juice. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What would you consider to be a measure of success for a link building campaign? I mean, how do we show the success? What metrics can we show to our clients or, or even for our own projects to prove that our link building is working mm -hmm. and that um, the money spent is worth it? Mm -hmm. What sort of reporting would you do? For me, um, when I'm working on something, I always start with a baseline. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, if it's keyword or competitive or audits, what you have to have a baseline because you don't know uh, if you don't know if, if you don't know if you've succeeded, if you don't know where you come from. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like when you were a little kid, your mom used to measure you on the door jam, you know, you were mm -hmm. five, you were this tall and six, you were this tall and seven, and you could see the progression, same difference here concept wise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you'll take a baseline. And you'll see how many backlinks you physically have. Um, and then you can work it from there. Um, I like to baseline too. I mentioned earlier, I think the people that rank ahead of me mm. for a particular search term, you, you need to know what search terms you want to target to. Um, and then I always look at the couple of people behind me to see what their benchmarks are. Um, and that way I can tell the algorithm changes all the time. Your page has changed mostly because of the way the people before you and behind you are, what they're doing. Okay. And yeah. definitely what you're doing affects that, but you don't live in a vacuum online. Mm -hmm. You definitely are what goes on around you from other people's web pages, what they're doing affect yours. Mm. And so you have to keep that in, in mind. You know, it's Google just doesn't look at it you know, and say, oh, this looks good. Let's move him up. It's like, yeah. how do they relate around it? Again, this is 
mathematical, 100% mathematical that is constantly being computed at the speed of sound, literally. So you have to know what your baseline is. You have yeah. to know the people before you, their baseline and the people after. And this is where, from my experience and um, what I see when I get from, you mentioned earlier, people come to me and say, you know, I work with this other SEO company and they did this. I, we get mm -hmm. that too and as link builders. Um, mm -hmm. That's the number one thing I see that doesn't get done. And so it's like, okay, well, let's just figure it out. And once you do, then you generally have a pretty good idea of what it's going to take to get those pages to rank forward. Um, but ranking isn't always everyone's end goal. Mm. It's surprising. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm an SEO link builder, so that's really my goal. But there are clients that come and say that they also want exposure. Um, mm -hmm. and they want media mentions and, um, you know, just different, different aspects that they want for their, for their brand. Mm -hmm. Um, generally you can get a lot of that in, in ranking, having pages rank well, but sometimes, you know, it's just about being a bullhorn on media sites and, mm -hmm. um, media magazines and so forth. So it just really depends on what their goal is. Uh, but you got to have a baseline. Mm, okay. You just need to know where to start and then depend if it's, if it's physically counting links, so be it. Um, if it's counting mentions, if you need media mentions and we use the word media, media is very big guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a lot of parts to it. Um, and it really depends on what aspect of media, you know, if you're in if you really working television, um, that's one thing. Uh, if you are, drop my earphone, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> if you're working television, uh, if you're working podcasts, um, if you're in scholarly or academic outlets, just really depends on what your focus is there um, for, for having mentions. But most people want to rank. That's mostly why people come and say, hey, yeah. I need a link building campaign because they want their pages to rank. Mm -hmm. What I picked up on there was the um, the benchmarking, so making sure that you know where you're starting from, but not just the benchmarking of your own site, the benchmarking competitively. Uh, I think that's a good reminder for people that the whole the whole process of SEO is competitive, and um, as those as those rankings juggle around, there's winners and losers. <laughs> True. So very true. And it happens more often than you think. Uh, mostly you've seen it because you look at search results, search, res search results shift. Um, sometimes they do a big shift and mm -hmm. sometimes they don't, sometimes they don't shift at all, or sometimes it's a very subtle shift. Uh, mostly for me, what I notice is more changes in news and ads than anything, but that affects where you sit sometimes which affects it's out of your total control right you, you can't do anything about those things mm. um and maybe your placement hasn't changed but if you know for some reason that term becomes popular and ads are purchased or videos mm. are shot or whatever um, the search results will change so it's just one of those things you have to keep an eye on mm. and if mm. you have the funds um and then to combat that, you know, you can combat that with either doing more video or, or, or augmenting the video that you have. So when do you stop building links? How do you know when to stop? When's enough enough? Is there any kind of, you know, is it when you've reached your goal or do you just, um, yeah, when do you put the brakes on? You know, I um because the algorithm is mathematical and changes constantly, um, and because your pages shift more because of what other people are doing and or or an equal amount from what you're doing to what other people are doing, I'm not sure it's something that you can ever stop if mm. your goal 
is to be seen and to be present in the search results. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking about some people talk about link velocity, you know, where it just it takes over and then you get all the links you want just naturally. You don't have to do any more yeah. outreach, you know. I always, when people talk about that, I always come back and say, I have yet to see Coca-Cola, Budweiser, you know, or any of them stop their advertising and they are definitely at the top of their game, mm, those mm. brands, because there's always somebody to come along and want to be a Budweiser, you know, or a Coca-Cola um, or because there's always Pepsi coming behind them. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know of any, any brand anywhere that ever stops and rests on its laurels because they think that the content they have will continually generate or keep them going along. And especially with this idea that this mathematical equation that we have a quadrillion pages for, um, you know, keeping in line, if you will, I don't know that you ever really can. I think it's one of those mm. things that you can build a brand in a niche and if you do a good job becoming top of mind, which is really your goal. Mm. Your goal is always to be top of mind. Oh, I need mortgage insurance. I'll go to blank. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need pet booties. I'll go to blank. Um, that's always top of mind. But people normally go to the to the machine. They sit on whatever machine it is that they have, phone, yeah. tablet, laptop, um, to look for something that is probably not top of mind. Mm. Um, so you have to work that angle of it all the time too. You know, you're not always top of mind for everyone. Mm. So. You have to play a couple of different angles all the time, which means you have to always be thinking and, and watching and looking at it from, from a different point of view. And the second most frequently asked question I get whenever I'm out and about um, is, is, you know, what, what, how do you do that? What should you do? Should you only look for, should we only focus on, doing this one kind of link building or should we be doing multiple kinds of link building? And my answer is back to that store on Main Street. If you had a store on Main Street, you wouldn't just take out a billboard and walk away. Hmm. You know, you're still going to do a lot of different advertising throughout the city, throughout the town in order to get people into your store. Link building doesn't exist just with one strategy. You can't just do blog posts, for example. Um, you have to look at a lot of different ways. And the only way to do that is to really understand your audience. Mm. You really understand who your people are. If you're spending time in those forums and listening to the super users and the rest of them, then you kind of know what's turning people on and what people need. And so you can, you can create it for that. You can create mm. it to build the brand, but there's still this, remember that guy over here who doesn't know who you're not top of mind for. So you have to create content and you have to do promotions for that individual as well. They refer to this, you know, as you know, with the top of the, the funnel issue. Funnel issues are generally um, associated with sales. But in mm -hmm. this particular case, you can create it for a link builder as well for people who are looking for information on a product you have to educate them and people who are looking to be sold, basically. Mm, yeah. um, so two different avenues to look at. So your content has to constantly be different and where you put it has to constantly be different in those two particular places. And that's where I think a lot of them just kind of falls down is mm. that they're only building links for keywords and not for the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a bit, a bit too one dimensional. Uh, some of these campaigns, yeah. perhaps. So, um, so part of that would be around doing your research in the early stages when you're developing a link campaign, like a strategy to develop that strategy, and then think about the different kinds of tactics you're going to use in the mix. I guess. Um, what, what we have would... the benefit of experience too. You know, oh, yeah. we, we, you know, when you you have a gray hair or three, you understand <laughs> that 
um, risk and, and, and it doesn't matter. I mean, you could be a young person, but if you've been doing this, you know, for a number of years, you had that benefit of experience. Part of it though, too, is that one of the great things about link builders like myself or Julie Joyce or Garrett French is that we work in a lot of different industries, tons of different industries. I don't think there's one I've not worked in. And there probably is. Someone's, now someone's going to challenge me and there <laughs> probably is. Say. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, you have that benefit. And having that benefit to see, um, it's one of those things that you ever heard that saying, yeah, you know, you're not an expert in anything, but you're a master of a lot of things. And it's, yeah. it's kind of, really broaden my horizons in, as a person too. I can say, oh, I worked in that industry and I know about this, this, and this. And people are like, really? You know, and it's like, yeah, you know, because you work in certain industries and you get into them deep enough that mm. you understand the heartbeat of that industry. You can kind of figure out where, where it's beating. Mm -hmm. You think about the SEO industry, you, there are several different heartbeats, but we kind of know where they are. Yeah. Um, if mm. somebody was researching our industry and they were smart, they'd figure it out too. Yeah. So mm. the benefit <laughs> of experience is definitely there. Mm. You know, to know what works and what doesn't work. Patience is also a big attribute. Uh, <laughs> you need a lot of patience. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But yeah. There's so many more questions coming to mind, but but I just wanted to ask you one more thing. What's on the agenda for you, Deborah? Do you, do you have your own projects? Or do you have something that you're looking to do yourself? So I do um, because I uh, have been blessed to have worked with a lot of wonderful people through the years. They do pop up occasionally mm. um, and actually frequently. And so I do still work on people that I've worked on in the past. Okay. Um, yeah. And so they also refer me to people. Um, if I get a referral, you know, I, I kind of take that men link building mentality. It's like, okay, if someone says referring you, it must be an endorsement. So <laughs> um, I, I do work, you know, on referral, yeah. but uh, I do have side projects. I have had um, what I call hobby sites. Yeah. Um, some people, I, I don't do any affiliate work anymore. I was doing that for a while and, and I've gotten out of the affiliate marketing uh, scope, but I do have hobby sites hmm. uh, that I keep up. They're on the, they're fun for me. They're things that I like and topics that I like. Yeah. Um, but I do, I, I kind of have something up my sleeve with publishing a new site um, that I've been working on, working with the developer on trying to get that put together, not, it's one of those things where if I have a good week, then I push forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I hit a bump, I'm like, no, maybe I don't want to do this after all. Um, but, I you know, <laughs> um, 18 years of 60 hour weeks doing yeah. link work, um, I just needed a little break. So that's why I do work on referral or um, mm, yeah. for people that I worked with before. And then I kind of do my own thing. And there's yeah. a big group of link builders out there that we chat amongst ourselves uh, occasionally. And it's yeah. nice. You know, I keep my finger in it. And, you know, because uh, we're both, you and I are in the same Discord group. I love my, yeah. my Ammon and Terry and that whole crew over there. There's several, several people through the years that I have been really fortunate to get to know and be friends yeah. with. So, well, thank you so much. Talk next time. Sounds great. It was my pleasure. It was good to talk.